at you with yet another DJ's Brew 2 beer review and I hope everybody out there is doing well. I'm happy. Why? Because I got my workout in and what is the time? It's time for another beer. That's right. Tonight we're not going to be local, not another Maryland beer, but we're going American and today we're going to have Anchor Summer Beer. I've had this one in the fridge for a little bit, been doing a bit of fridge reclamation or cleaning out today and saying, geez, what do I got to drink before it's not good to drink anymore? Um, this isn't a high alcohol beer, so I want to get this one down. So, Anchor Summer Beer. Anchor Summer Beer is an American wheat ale. That's how they describe it. So, maybe it's like a Hefeweizen a little bit. We'll see if it's spicy, what the nose has on it and everything. And as you guys know, Anchor Brewing's out of San Francisco, California. Granddaddies of the craft beer movement. All of us beer geeks hold them near and dear to our heart. Mr. Maytag, thank you for helping this movement start going. And um, you know what? I love your old Foghorn. I love the Steam beer. I love the Beckles Brown. So let's see what we think about the uh, Anchor Summer beer. So got our bottle popper, which if you see is almost about the size of this bottle here. But let's pop it open and see what we get. Oops. Uh-oh. That one's not working today, so I got the back up. As always, not a problem. Got a little anchor cap here for the collection. As I told you guys, that one has been abused at a couple parties now with Johnny and the boys, so might be time to order a new one. So let's get this one in the glass, see what we got. This beer is a uh, 4.6 alcohol by present alcohol by volume, and it's uh, 15 IBUs. I got the uh, flute top rising glass here today because I, as I thought we would have a monster head on this bad boy as you can see it's a whole hand of head as we pour it in just like a, like a half of ice and man that head is a monster on the top of there crystal clear beer um, kind of an ambery yellow not that sort of macro lager pish yellow but it's got a little bit darker caramel color thrown in there to it active bubble streaming up from the bottom really tight head a little bit rocky at the top and let's get a nose on this one and see what we got going on. But before I do that, you guys can see really nice color on this beer. Classic, classic color. Let's see what smell we got. Mmm, man, that's a nice aroma. Right up the front, there's a lot of sweet malt. It's a real inviting beer. This smells like a real easy drinking beer. It's, it's, it's got a soft scent to it. It's not punchy in the face. There's some light floral hops in the background there. I'm not smelling any like adjunct lager type smell or anything like that. It's almost like if you're smelling a uh, you know a lager beer that doesn't have that cardboard and metallic taste like you get from you know the lagers, but mostly multi grains and the wheat and light hops is what I'm getting out of this one. So man, I'm right thirsty. Had about an uh, hour workout today. Let's see what we got on the taste of this guy here. The taste follows the nose a lot. It's a medium thin thickness and at the front you get that malt sweetness. Real real faint hops in there. Um, it's not like a half of Hefeweizen where you have the spiciness and the lemon and citrus in there. The hops are more of a bittering hops. It has a dry finish and in the middle of the tongue is where that dry finish starts with a little bit of those bittering hops that you get in your mouth. Real refreshing beer. This one is easy to drink. This is a slammer, no doubt, guys. You could chug these back in session on this beer without any problem at all. It's It's got a pleasant taste to it. Um, am I going to buy another one? I don't know. I'll have to take another swig here and think about it, but um, it is a tasty beer. You can tell it's been made with quality ingredients, mostly pale malt in the malt bill here that you can taste. And like I said, for me, maybe I'd like a little more hops, but let me get another taste of this. Yep, it, the taste is the same, it hasn't changed. Um, it's a little thin for my liking. I'd like maybe a little bit heavier, more present mouthfeel, and a little bit more hops. But all in all, I think it's a good summer beer. It's a really good hot weather beer. Um, this blows adjunct lagers away. This is kind of a gateway beer, I would say, for non-craft beer drinkers. Um, it's the right color for them. It's got the head, that white sort of rocky big head. Of course, the head retention on this is awesome. The whole time I've been talking, the beer the has stayed up on this beer. Um, but I think it's a good gateway beer. The taste isn't real aggressive. 
It's not light. It's not a skunky taste in beer. It doesn't have that, that wet cardboard smell or anything like adjunct lagers have. But um, if you're into craft beer, this might not be the beer for you because it doesn't have that big flavor maybe you're expecting it to have. It is a craft beer, yes. Mm -hmm. You can tell it's all quality ingredients in this, no adjunct or garbage put into it. But, you know, um, this is a good situational beer. It's hot out. You're out there eating some food, out by the barbecue grill, banging these back. You don't get too trashed because you're only 4.6% ABV. Real low bitterness, 15, like like Hefeweizen is. But where it, for me it falls off is it doesn't have that extra kick and flavor like Hefeweizens have with the spiciness and citrus and everything that comes in with their that yeast that they have in that beer. So what are the other guys thinking? Right Beer gives us a 33, and Beer Advocate gives it a 77. Um... I'm going to give this one an 80, you know, kind of like, a, say, a C plus, high C plus to a B minus around there. You know, I, I guess I'll lean towards a B minus. It is an above average beer, but I don't know if it's one that I'll have again unless the situation is right. Also, knocking this down is their hieroglyphic-like date code on the outside. I mean, if you're doing this on the back of the bottle, you know, you're stamping your label, you can put a real date code instead of this Julian stuff, 2AL or whatever the heck they're doing with this. Um, nobody likes that anchor. I'm sorry. I mean, I know maybe back in the day that was going the extra mile in craft beer world, but it's not anymore. And if you're doing that, you can easily put a legible date on there that says 4 to 12 or whatever the heck it comes out to. Because I think that's like April 2nd, maybe AL is April and then 2nd. But it has actually more than that. I saw a review um, online that explains it all, and it's quite complex, actually. So, anyways, um, uh, give this one a try, guys, if you like it. Um, you don't like it, whatever, let me know. Comment, rate, subscribe, let me know what's going on here. And as always, guys, remember, think globally, drink locally, support that craft beer movement, and I'll see you on the next DJ's Brew 2. That's a peace out.